aircraft carriers will continue to exist. The oceans of the future will be more complicated and contentious, and new risks will be appearing. To the few navies that can operate them, the carrier will still offer unmatched conventional superiority. The supercarrier, the largest and most powerful type of carriers, is being built only by the United States, China, and France. The nature of war is ever-changing. Future possibilities are being created by new technology that are changing the way battles are waged today. Existing unit types are demonstrating their value at the same time. The conflict in Ukraine has made this issue more apparent. The effectiveness of anti-tank weapons has led many people to doubt the tank's future in the public eye. However, both sides are still frantically looking for tanks on the ground. Similar discussions are taking place in the naval community. The aircraft carrier is in the sights of armchair broadsides. It is common to question their ability to survive in the face of contemporary threats. However, allegations that the aircraft carrier has died are unfounded. Instead of reducing their construction efforts, ships around the world are stepping them up. For good reason, aircraft carriers represent the peak of a Navy's capabilities. They offer an adversary unmatched conventional superiority. The enormous range of aircraft assets makes it difficult to defend against them with weapons like ground-based missiles. Their versatility also extends to limited war, full-scale combat, and diplomatic and humanitarian missions. However, only a few number of nations are capable of producing supercarriers. There is no precise definition for this phrase, which was used to refer to the massive Cold War vessels of the US Navy. Up until this point, other navies' huge aircraft carriers have consistently fallen short. The word is appropriate for the newest French and Chinese designs. The most remarkable class of aircraft carrier, known as supercarriers, is only being pursued by three countries. These are China, France, and the United States. Other nations also run carriers, including Russia, Britain, India, Italy, and Spain. However, these are in some ways less powerful or smaller. Supercarriers are not well defined, although they all share similar traits. They are the biggest, have air wings that can compete with most air forces, and can fly bigger aircraft, such airborne early warning planes. In terms of supercarriers, the US is without a doubt the benchmark. The equally massive Gerald R. Ford-class supercarriers are set to replace the present Nimitz-class supercarriers. Even if the others in this article will be near, these 100,000-ton behemoths are unparalleled in details. The design was based on years of grueling experience operating supercarriers. The Liaoning, China's first aircraft carrier, conducting training exercises in the Yellow Sea demonstrates the country's growing proficiency and assurance in carrier operations. However, the most similar to the U.S. Navy's is the newest Type 003 Fujian class, which is being outfitted in Shanghai. Although it is a little shorter, its size is generally comparable. However, the Chinese concept uses conventional propulsion as opposed to the U.S. Navy design's nuclear propulsion. This theoretically offers the American carrier an endurance advantage. However, it should be kept in mind that the ship's surface escorts and planes all require replenishment. Thus, fleet auxiliaries are still required for the nuclear carrier to function. The Chinese design has several other elements that are a little less ambitious. It only has three EMALS, electromagnetic aeroplane launch system, catapults and two aircraft lifts, instead of three. This might lower the sortie rate of its air wing. Like the American Navy, the French Navy has a lot more experience in carrier operations. Despite being significantly smaller than the American supercarriers, their current carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, is nuclear-powered. The Port Avians of New Generation, or PA Inc., will close the gap. It is just slightly shorter than the Chinese Type 003 at about 300 meters and 75,000 tons. The French Navy, Marine Nationale, will be able to project power more successfully on its own or with allies thanks to PA Inc., maintaining its conventional dominance. The development of a new generation of carrier killer, weaponry is evidence of the aircraft carrier's ongoing usefulness. 
China has been developing a number of anti-ship ballistic missiles, ASBM, and conducting desert testing using dummy carriers. In addition to building the gigantic Poseidon nuclear-powered torpedo for anti-carrier use, Russia has also been working on the Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile. The Kinzhal Air launched ballistic missile, which is marketed as an ASBM, is also present. Additionally, most recently, it was rumored that Russia might use its Zemevic land-based ballistic missile as an ASBM. Uncertainty exists around what this newest endeavor reveals about Russian faith in the other systems. What is clear however, is that carriers still matter to strategic planners. They have mattered in some ways ever since. Carriers have experienced numerous threats to their existence as high-value targets. They had already encountered submarines, anti-ship missiles, and aircraft. The newest generation of threats includes the new carrier killer weaponry. The most potent warships at sea continue to be aircraft carriers, especially the so-called supercarriers. However, the restricted number of navies that can use them is a closed group. Hope you guys love the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and please do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to all. So you can get the notification on each upload.